Good morning. Good morning, friends, and welcome to this service of worship. Grace is ours and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so happy to have you all here, friends and family of the Chattanooga Boys Choir. Special welcome to you all. Special welcome to all of you. We are thrilled to have you here. And you know what a blessing they are to any and all who hear them. For our second pres members, you may not know that the Boys Choir are here Mondays and Tuesdays throughout the school year practicing. And the space is here for them. We are thrilled to partner with them in that. And then we get the benefit of hearing them uh, at least occasionally throughout the year. We are so happy to have them, their director, Vic Oaks, Kristen Wyram, so, so many of the staff who are here today, and all of you, family and friends, welcome to all of you. And to our Second Presbyterian family, you are part of us today, and we're glad to have you here. It is a special Sunday as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, and any who profess Jesus and believe are welcome to partake. This is an open table. We do not uh, disqualify anyone. So uh, if you would value having communion with us today, uh, you are welcome to come and join us in that. There are a few announcements there on the back of the bulletin. I do want to uh, just call your attention again to all of the events of the week that are going on. We have a started movie night on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, and we are watching uh, episodes of The Chosen. Uh, many of you have probably seen most of those, but we're watching that together and talking about it, so if you'd like to join us for that, please do. Uh, you'll see other events happening there. And also, our Presbyterian women are collecting a special offering today. It's the birthday offering. There is information about uh, recipients of that and also envelopes in the back. So if you would be willing to make a donation to that, please do. If you are visiting and would like to know more about this church and our ministry here, we would welcome you and ask you to sign that yellow card there in the pew in front of you. Give us your information. We'd love to be in touch with you and get to know you if you'd like. And you can put that and any offerings in our offering plates there at the back of the sanctuary. We also are having lunch today. Our wonderful uh, staff, Alice uh, Morgan, is here uh, cooking up a, a great meal for us. So that will also be following worship. And um, I believe that's it. Does any, anyone else have an announcement for us this morning? Lon? Yes. Okay, today at 2 o'clock for Gun Violence Awareness Month. Okay, thank you. Any, anything else? Appreciate that, Lon. All right. Good to have you all here. Let us worship God.
Will you join with me now responsively in our call to worship? O oh God, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. Please stand and let's sing hymn number 327. Friends, we are going to be looking at the story of creation today, and I want to recall for all of us as we approach God with our confession that we were not created in sin, we were created in love, we were created in goodness. We are trying to find our way back to that. The Creator, our God, continues to call us, to invite us to come back, to be reunited. And one of the ways that we do that is to share with God how we have not observed God's ways, but have chosen to go our own. This is an opportunity to hear God's call and to share together in our shortcomings, trusting that God is a God who forgives and who is so ready to welcome us back. Will you join with me in our prayer of confession? Presence, life, fire, 
God who is three in one. We confess our disrespect of your creation. We take everything on this glorious planet for granted. We take your craftsmanship into our hands, not to love, but to use and then discard. The world is in danger because of our careless appreciation for its resources and all its people. Forgive us, divine creator, and renew our desire to be restored to you and the precious earth we live on. We pray for mercy because you are merciful. Let us continue our prayer in silence. Amen. All of creation is yearning, is groaning to be reunited with God and God's glory. And we are part of that and wait for the day when that glory will fully be revealed. And until then, we are called to be God's people here. And so trusting that we have been forgiven. Friends, this is a new day. The good news of the gospel is that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Shall we stand and give God the glory? be seated and I'll invite Carol Davis and our children and any children who would like to come on forward for their time. Good morning. Today, like Reverend Kathy said, we're going to talk about creation. Have you guys ever been to the beach? No. No? Have you ever been to the river? We have a river. All right. How about the mountains? No. <laughs> well, when you go to those places, do you see the beauty of creation around you? And you see God's creation. He made us a beautiful world. We have flowers. Have you seen flowers lately? Yeah. How about trees? All the trees are coming out with their leaves. Um, we have beautiful clouds. I, I used to love to look up at the clouds and try to figure out what they were. Um, have you ever done that? Yeah. <laughs> Do they look like a shape to you? Great. Um, we see beautiful things around us. Uh, here's an illustration of what God's creation looks like. What do you see in there? Trees and flowers. You see anything else? Bushes. Flowers. Okay. Apples. 
apples. And oranges. So we all agree that God created a beautiful creation in our world. Um, did you know that beauty is something that you can't always see? Do you know that your parents love you? Can you see that? How do you see it? They care for you. But it's not something like the trees and the flowers that you actually see. Do you guys have friends? Yes. Can you see friendship? Yes. How do you see friendship? You play together. But you can't see it like you do the trees and the fruits and the animals, right? Um, the Bible said when God finished making the, the heavens and the earth, he looked at it and he said, it is very good. And that means that it's beautiful. One of the things that God's, his creation, um, he makes things of beauty. You guys are things of beauty because God made you too. I hope as you go through this week and you see the beautiful things of spring coming into summer, that you are reminded that God is a God of beauty. And he wants our lives to be beautiful as well and to appreciate things and the people that he has created. Can we say a prayer? You'll bow your heads with me. Creator God, we thank and praise you for all the wonders of nature. Thank you for creating a beautiful world for the mountains and the oceans, the sun and the moon, the tall trees and the tiny flowers, for the fish and the birds and the cows and the cats and the people. We thank you for placing us here in your marvelous world and for always being here, both now and forever. Amen. You may go back to your seats or to the nursery. Thank you.
everybody is very familiar with this scripture. Um, it's one of my favorites because I am a gardener and I've spent the last week digging in the dirt. <laughs> and every time I read this scripture, I, I'm reminded of how wonderful it is that these tiny little seeds that I put into the ground sprout up into big plants. God is wonderful. Genesis 1, 1 through 13. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos. The darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made a dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning and the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation that bear fruit with seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in God's image. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing together hymn number 850. be seated. For the next several weeks now, we're going to be looking at stories from the Old Testament, stories that talk about our origin. Last week, we had a wonderful celebration of Pentecost and the start of Christianity. And over the next weeks, we're going to be looking at the start of humanity. We're going to be looking at who God is and who we are and that relationship and what difference it makes. Today, we start at the beginning in Genesis, with the creation of the universe and human beings. There are many stories that have circulated about how our universe and humans were created. Everything from the 1927 Big Bang Theory, it says we started as hydrogen atoms and energy swirling to create other chemicals whose interactions resulted in life. 
to the Enuma Elish, written during the Mesopotamian Empire thousands of years BC. It tells of gods giving birth to other gods who kill each other. The corpse of one of the dead gods is stretched out to create the universe. And humans are created from their blood. How do you like that creation story? The Genesis version of creation is quite a divergence from those accounts. It gives us a glimpse into the nature of God and the relationship between God and humankind. In this version, humans didn't start from atoms and energy. They weren't created to serve the whims of an angry God. Humans were made in the image of God. Humans were made to be co-creators, contributing to the care of creation. It was in a deeply relational way that God loved and cared for creation, including us. We were created out of love. All of creation was loved and valued by God. And all of creation was and is a reflection of God, the creator. From the pileated woodpecker to our pets, to every forest, desert, and ocean plant and animal, to the sky and the beautiful sunsets, all of nature reflects the creator. All of these intricate beings and intricate systems in miraculous relationship are all images of the love of God. Have you ever watched ants? Have you ever watched ants? You've seen them carrying huge breadcrumbs from our picnics? Did you know that they can carry an object that's about 20 times their body weight? If we could do that, we'd be lifting over a ton. And the mounds that they make, their tunnels go at least a foot underground. They burrow out so many tunnels that even in a heavy rain, their colony is not in danger. In the Genesis version of creation, we learn that God is delighted creating everything which God created. And it was good. Humanity was created good. We were not originally sinful. We were originally good. Creator, Son, and Spirit were present, and it was all good. And that wind that God swept over the waters was the same wind that blew through those disciples at Pentecost. God has been calling us back to that original goodness throughout history. The Genesis poet proclaims that there's more to our world than just matter and energy. We're not here for some purposeless fate. We're not abandoned to ourselves. The Trinity, Creator, Redeemer, Spirit, continue to hover over all existence, every living plant 
and creature like a tender parent. Every life has sacred value. On Friday, I went to a press conference at the Chattanooga Convention Center. It was to kick off June being National Gun Violence Awareness Month. Faith leaders and others gathered to request our state officials to pass legislation that would curb the availability of assault weapons and mandate background checks. One of the speakers was Rabbi Craig Lewis, from the Mizpah congregation. He talked about the rabbinic tradition known as Pikwak Nefesh, one of the most important obligations of the Jewish commandments. Pikwak Nefesh means that saving a human life should take priority over everything even if this means breaking some of the laws of the Torah. So if someone is severely injured on the Sabbath, you break the Sabbath to tend to the person's wounds and hopefully save that person's life. And why? Because life is holy. And human life is the primary holy. Human life created from God. It's good. It's holy. And I found interesting what one commentator noticed in the Genesis story. The text tells us that God created fruit-bearing trees of every kind and vegetation with plants yielding seed of every kind. God made creeping creatures of every kind, winged birds of every kind. By the time God creates Adam, we expect to hear that God created human beings of every kind. But that refrain is missing. That is not what the Bible says. What does it mean? There are no kinds of human beings. Today in our world, when we have access to news and pictures, stories of people all around our planet, we're accustomed to seeing various people, a variety of skin color, language, and dress. We think nothing of classrooms and businesses, having a variety of students and employees. But do you remember the first time you saw someone who looked different from you? Do you remember the first time you saw someone who looked different from you? One of my memories was when in third grade, a family from India moved to the college town where I grew up. Their daughter, Jasmine, went to my school, and my classmates and I were mesmerized by her. She had beautiful brown skin and jet black hair and pierced ears. I know we stared at her a lot. Those stares got returned when years later, I went to India, and my white skin stood out amidst 
all that brown. Human beings are different. Human beings come in all shapes and sizes and colors, but human beings are human beings. Perhaps God did this intentionally so that none of us could claim to be something other. Yet we have let the definition of human being be defined by sources that are not original. Every human being is royalty in the eyes of the Creator. No one is superior and no one is inferior. Those who think that they are in any way better than and that others need to be denied or contained or removed, dishonor the Creator. Any practice of superiority amongst human beings is idolatry. No one and nothing else has the right to define us. No one has the right to define who we are except God. God defines us. God has defined us. God has named us very good. God invites us into a relationship of intimacy. When we take the time to notice this incredible creation, like Carol was describing, we experience awe, humility, gratitude, joy. God made this universe and every human being in beauty and goodness. It's part of who we are. It's in our makeup. Are we letting God define us? Are we acting in a way that celebrates the God-infused life we have been given? Politics don't define us. Work does not define us. Gender and sexual orientation do not define us. Color and culture don't define us. The past and past sufferings don't define us. God defines us. We can be about creating a society based on the principle of pekuach nefesh, where everyone is looking out for the life, the safety, and the well-being of everyone else. That life is who we are, and that life is why we are here. Friends, our Lord Jesus valued life, loved life, was willing to give his life in love for us. And so, as you take a moment to reflect on what we have been given, Will you prepare your hearts now as we come to the sacrament of Holy Communion? I'm asking Carol to come join me here at the table.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give God thanks. Friends, this is the joyful feast that our Lord has prepared for us. People will come and do from north and south and east and west to partake of this meal which our Lord has prepared. The Presbyterian Church did not prepare this. Our Lord has given this to us in remembrance and in celebration of the life that he has given so that we might have life. And so as we come to this table, we remember that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. As often as you eat of this, do so remembering me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim the Lord's death and victory over death until he comes. A reminder again that this is an open table, so we'll invite you to come forward from the back if you'll start. Carol and I will give you a piece of bread. Please go ahead and partake of that. And then there are cups of juice here that you can also take and set the cup here in an empty tray. Or take it back to your seat if you would rather have some time to meditate on this. So, friends, the joyful feast of the people of God for the people of God. The cup of Christ, the body of Christ for you. Please come. <coughs>
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Will you join responsively with us now in the prayer of thanksgiving? In accord with God's declaration that all of creation is good, let us pray for the church, the world, and all for whom we are called to care for, saying, Hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for our world, which you made and renewed in the power of Jesus' resurrection. Make us wise and careful of your gifts as we live on earth. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. For earth and all creatures and plants, for healthy water and air and soil, for policies and laws that regard our home in God's universe as a precious gift. God of all goodness, hear our prayer. For our families and our communities, that your life together, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, may show us the same importance of each of us God of all goodness, hear our prayer. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. stand and sing our closing hymn, number 14.
Friends, as you go forth from here, remember that each of you is created in God's image. God loves each one of you. Each one of you is precious in God's sight, and no one else gets to tell you who to be or whose you are. You belong to God. And we take that belonging and that love with us wherever we go. Safe travel to the Chattanooga Boys Choir as they embark on their tour. Safe travels to each one of us as we go back out into this world where it is difficult to remember who defines us. But friends, take the love of God the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord, the love of the Holy Spirit, all of whom created us in love and for goodness. Take them all with you. May they be upon you. And may the blessing of God always go with you, now and forevermore. Amen.